It is time to start getting our hands dirty on the real thing here. We're going to start working with our Cisco lab switches and we're going to practice some fundamental switch commands and also our configuration modes. I'm going to introduce you to those here as well. And then we're going to work with something called a virtual LAN that we've been talking about for quite a while it seems now. But now we're going to configure them, see what they're all about, when we want them, when we might not want them that kind of thing and we're going to solve an issue that we ran into earlier with hubs, repeaters, bridges, and switches. But right now a few config modes and a special word for you for those who of you who are really new to Cisco networking and you're not familiar with the config modes. First off, that's fine. Everybody has a point where they don't know the config modes. I didn't know them. You didn't know them. Everybody doesn't know them at one point or another just takes a little getting used to. They will become second nature to you as your studies progress, as you watch these videos. If you have a simulator or even better home lab equipment, if you don't, that's okay. But if you have them, it does help you get used to the config modes because it was a little frustrating for me at first when I started studying for the CCNA because they're just totally new to you and you want to run this command and you got to be a certain config mode. It's, it's a lot like learning how to drive you know, at first you're thinking about everything you're doing, and then as you go on and you get practice, you're like, oh, okay, you know, this isn't as bad as I thought. Config modes are the same way. Speaking of config modes, when you first power up a new Cisco switch, or one that you've totally initialized, erase the config from, however you want to put it, you're going to see a prompt like this when the switch comes back up. And I know you already want to know how I initialize the switch. And everybody thinks they know but there's one command people tend to leave out. I will show you how to do that once we're done with this particular section of the course. I'll show you how to initialize a switch. Good stuff to know for the lab and for the exam. Now, this is what we call user exec mode. When you see the arrowhead there pointing to the right in front of whatever your host name is, and right now it's switch because we haven't set a host name, there are no commands on the switch right now at all. And frankly, there's not much you can do from here. You can run some show commands, which we will be doing plenty of in these labs and all the other ones we're doing because we're always verifying what's going on. And we do that with show commands. But if you wanted to configure something, like say you wanted to give the switch a name, you couldn't even do that from here. You can't configure anything from here. What you need to do first is go into enable mode. And notice how the prompt changed from an arrowhead to a pound sign. The official name for this mode is privileged exec mode. Okay, that's, you gotta remember that, privileged exec mode, but people call it enable mode, and I won't even bother telling you why. <laughs> the answer's right in front of you. And the thing is, you'll even see that in Cisco books and documents. I've seen enable mode a lot more than I've seen privileged exec mode. But you got to know both names for the mode. That's something you got to get used to with Cisco. We have two names for a lot of things. And if someone says privileged exec, privileged exec mode, hopefully better than I just said privileged exec mode, then you'll know exactly what they're talking about. Now, this is kind of the springboard for your configuration modes. Because notice I said this is enable mode, it's not enable configuration mode. This is your launch pad. This is where you can go to other modes to actually configure something. And the first thing we're going to do is put in a rather long-winded command called configure terminal. And I'm going to exit right back to the prompt because I want to show you, get out of here you, this is how it's usually expressed. I had to think for a second to actually type out configure terminal because almost everyone just puts in conf t and that's the way you see it in a lot of books but the full command is configure terminal and we get a little old message that says to enter configuration commands one per line and with control z we can certainly do that and notice that the prompt changed again that's what you want to watch and frankly you want to watch that on practice exams and job interview questions and real exam questions that kind of thing when you're in the exam room because you want to watch for your config mode and make sure that you're in the one you think you're in and this one is called global configuration mode it is named that because the commands you enter 99.9% .9 of the time affect the entire router and 99.9% .9 of the time take effect immediately. There are very rare exceptions, very rare. So this is global configuration mode. It doesn't mean that you can run every command in this mode. 
that's kind of what it sounds like. Oh, global mode, I can enter anything. No, you can't. You can enter global configuration commands. And the first one we're going to do is the one that gives the switch a name. And we're also going to look at a service, iOS Help, that I really, really, really want you to get used to using now at this point in your studies. Because for some reason, more experienced admins, you know, they think using iOS help is like asking for corrections when you're lost. And I realize in today's world that doesn't happen. <laughs> but, uh, but it used to. You have to actually ask for directions, right? Um, I just want you to use iOS help, get used to it, get comfortable with it, and keep using it as your studies progress. Now, let's take a look at it. And first off, the, the name of the command is actually hostname. That is the command, and I'm going to use iOS help to see what's next. Because you'll always use a question mark for iOS help. And this is one of two ways to use the question mark, and it's really the most popular. And we will be using this throughout the course because, of course, the commands are going to get a little longer than hostname. And when we're writing access lists, the commands are going to go off the edge of the screen here. Uh, I promise you'll see the whole thing, but it will happen. So you can have some pretty long commands, and you don't always remember the syntax of every single one, so you use iOS help to help yourself along, save yourself some time. Now, right now, iOS help will show you all the options available at this point in the command. And there's only one option here, this system's network name. What do you want to call it? Well, I want to call it switch1. Not very imaginative, but that's what we're going with. And let me use iOS help and see what my options are from there. And I only have one, and it's called cur. And actually, CR inside the arrowheads there, that stands for carriage return. And what this means, <clears throat> you can see it by itself like you do here, or you may see it with other options. And what this means simply is that what you have at this point, <clears throat> pardon me, what you have at this point is a legal command. CR. So if I hit enter right now, it's not going to say incomplete command. It's going to accept it. I may not want to enter it yet. And in later labs, you'll see where we'll use this. We'll see the CR, but we won't hit enter yet. But here we are because why? Because we have no other options. So I'll backspace there. We've got host name switch one. I hit enter and notice the host name changed immediately. That's another, I don't want to say side effect, but that's a characteristic of a global, globally configured command. It's going to take effect immediately. So we've got switch one right there. Now while we're on the topic of iOS help, I want to show you the other use for it. And it all comes down to a space. Now you'll notice when I used iOS help here and here to see what my options were at that point, there's a space between the last word I put in and the question mark. Command space, question mark. You can also put the question mark right against what you've typed in to see what options begin with the letters you've entered. And that's really good when you have a moment of, all right, I know, okay, there's a command to name the switch, and I think it begins with an H. You know, so what we'll do, if I can't think of it, I'll do that, and you'll notice there is no space between the H and the question mark. And the effect of iOS help is dramatically different, because now instead of showing me options, it's showing me all the things I could put in at this point that begin with the letter I just put in. Oh, okay, host name, that's it. That's it, I knew, I knew that was it. That happens to everybody. <laughs> it still happens to me on occasion. And it's just a command maybe you haven't used in a while, and just say, ah, oh, it began with CR or something like that. So, you know, you could put CR in. Then hit that, and it's something called crypto, and you just go from there. So two uses for iOS help. The first one I showed you is by far the most popular, uh, but they are both good things to know. Now, very quickly, I want to introduce you to another feature, and it's a caret that pops up. And what happens is, let's say I type in hostname Chris Bryant. Okay, well, that was rejected by the router, and we could tell because, uh, excuse me, by the switch, because it says invalid input. And people tend to focus on that, but please don't, because the entire message is important. Because, as I said, these commands are going to get longer. You can type in, again, an access list line that's going to go off the screen. And if it comes back and just says invalid input, you wouldn't be very happy. 
because you would say, where is the invalid input? Where did I go wrong? Look for this caret because that's what it's all about. This is pointing to the point where you went wrong in the command. And this is unbelievably helpful at times because you're going to enter a command sooner or later. It's going to come back and say this and you're like, wait a minute, I got it right. And maybe you just misspelled something. But the caret is saying, hey, you were fine here and you were fine all the way up to this caret. And the problem here is that you can't have a space in a host name. You can't do it. So the switch was looking at it saying, okay, host name Chris, hey, what's this other stuff? And as soon as that other stuff started, that's where the caret came in. So very helpful there for seeing where you went wrong with a command because believe me, everyone goes wrong with a command sooner or later. Happens to everybody. We're going to stop here and at the beginning of the very next video, I'm going to show you the port I used to connect physically to this switch and a couple of very helpful commands to use with that port. See you there.